that's a born again Christian ought to be up on God in the mighty name of Jesus. Well, I would like to use for a supper this morning. No matter how heavy it gets, God can raise you up. Yes, sir. No matter how heavy it gets, God can raise you up. Yes, sir. God can bring you out. Yes, sir. God can deliver you. God can make you free. Yes, sir. For there was a frown on your face. God can turn it into a smile. Yes, sir. Hallelujah. When somebody said it just can't be, God said it can. Yes, sir. So much so the scripture said I can do all things. Not on my own, but through Christ. Which not us me. Hallelujah. So God would have us to be encouraged. Turn your Bible to 2 Kings, the 6th chapter. 2 Kings, the 6th chapter. Amen. Starting at verse 1. And you have it, say amen. There it is, well, it's up on the screen. Thank the Lord for the screen. Amen. And the Bible reads thus. And the sons of the prophets said unto Elias, Behold now, the place where we dwell with thee is too straight for us. Let me explain that first verse. Elijah was a teacher at the hour. Theology. Yes. And he had become so popular that the school, uh, the attendance was so great that this statement in the first verse was indicating that it needed to be expanded. Amen. Amen. It's a good thing when people hunger and thirst after the word. Amen. That word straight. In other words, we need more room. Yes, I need something like this. Let us go, we pray, unto John and take fence, every man a beam. In other words, let us go down to the John River and get some building materials. Yes, uh huh. Now, I want you to understand that they lived in a time that they were not craftsmen, they were walling. Kia and all types of power tools at their disposal. Amen. So they had to use primitive tools. Uh huh. And let us make us a place there where we may well. And he answered, Go ye. And one said, Be content, I pray you, and go with thy servants. In other words, we're not just going to go. In other words, the stewards were going to build this bigger place. Yes. And they requested that he would go with him. Yeah. Come on now. And he, come on now. He answered, I will go. Yeah. Come on here. So he went with him. And when they came to Jordan, they cut down wood. Yeah. Amen. If you're going to build something, you've got to have something to build with. So they were cutting down the wood that was necessary to build the bigger place. But as one was felling a beam, in other words, he was chopping away with the axe. That's all they had. They didn't have any power, chainsaws, or gas power, or battery power, plug-ins, or nothing like that. They used axes. Amen. And as he was chopping down, come on now. Uh, they cut down the wood, but one, as one was felling a, a, a beam, the axe head flew into the water, flew into the jaw, uh -huh, which was what happened on many occasions if one was swinging an axe. An axe was a heavy piece of iron that had been sharpened on both ends, and it had the, ten the tendency to fly off from time to time. 
But this is what happened while he was cutting down his particular beam. He cried and said, last master, calling on Elijah for him, was borrowed. In other words, this was not my axe. But the head that blew off, and it flew and it fell right into the Jordan River. Come on now, let me tell you something about the Jordan. The Jordan was known to be a murky and muddy uh, body of water. Yes, what clean and pure like some of the islands that folks go to me where you can stand there and see the fish swimming in the bottom, but it was dirty and muddy and murky and you couldn't see nothing in it. So when this particular thing happened and the man said, the young man said, and it was borrowed. You know, that's why I really don't like borrowing stuff. <laughs> Because when you borrow something, that means that you are responsible for it. You're responsible until you return it to its uh, original owner. Yes. So the young man was pretty distraught by that. And then he was kind of worried. And, and he let uh, Elisha know that that I said has thrown, come on now, in the water. Yes. Uh, and then the sixth verse says this, and the man of God said, where fell it? In other words, where did it go in? Amen. Give me a, a location, a possible location where it fell into the water. Yes. Now, when it fell into the water, the, the law of physics says that because it was heavy, it sank all the way to the bottom. Come on now. Yes. And when it sank to the bottom, it rested in the mud, and you could come on somebody. I said it rested in the mud. Now, now watch this. Amen. The, the enemy, amen, he wants you to dislodge yourself from God. He wants you to fall in and go all the way to the bottom. Yeah. He wants to put you down in the muck and the mire. Yeah. Come on now. So there's more to this story than just the, the axe head. Uh, Elijah took this opportunity to teach even then, to teach a lesson. Amen. Because normally when something like that would happen, one might say, oh well, if the, the head that flew off the axe and it's been gotten to, the, the, to this river and it's so dark and murky down there that nobody could even find it anyhow. Come on now. And that's why I was serving, uh, the, the, the young man cried out, Master said, flew in the water. What is I going to do? Pardon my English. But what I'm going to do? I borrowed this axe. Yeah. Come on now. But the man of God took that for an opportunity, amen, to teach something. Yeah. Amen. Just because something goes down, amen, just because something is in the mud, God ain't saying nothing. Right. It's in the, in the bottom, uh, it's in here, the bottom place. Come on now. That don't mean it can't be raised up. Right. Come on now, y'all remember, if you will, some of our lives, we were all the way at the bottom. Yes, sir. Amen. We sank all the way down. Yeah. It's about more than just the axe head and the weight of the, of the axe head. Yeah. The Bible says lay aside every weight and the sin that so easily beset us. Okay. You understand that? In other words, God wants us to travel life. Right. God, come on here, y'all. God don't want us heavy and weighted down with all type of stuff. Right. Amen. What good is an axe without its head? Uh -huh. Come on now. Just a handle of the axe can't do you no good. Uh -huh. It ain't gonna cut down nothing. Uh -huh. Just having uh, uh, some things is not enough. We got to have the whole robe. We got to put on the whole arm of God. Yes. So an uh, axe without its head, uh, uh, axe head uh, 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 without its handle is no good. And a, and, a, and, a, and a handle without the axe head is no good. Yeah. Come on, somebody. So only God is able to put us back together yeah. for his intended use. Now, watch this. Now, if we are in such a down position in life, if we're at the bottom of things, if we see everything negative, and, and uh, what is all going to do? In other words, a whole lot of folks would have said, well, that's it. It's at the bottom of the lake. We might try to see if you can find another axe. But God want to use you. Yes, God. Come on now. That axe needs to be put back into action. It has to be put back on its axe handle that it can be used for the purpose that it went 
there for. Yes. All right? So the man of God did something peculiar. Now the student, he probably said, well, that's it. Like many of us do. Come on now. But see, watch this. You got to learn how to look for God in everything. Yes. And that's what Elisha did. He, he was able to show how the God is able to do that which seems impossible. Yes. It looked like the axe head was lost. I ever talked about or seen somebody and, and it seemed like they were so bad. It seemed like they were so deep in sin that it was just a useless thing. There's no sense in even trying to retrieve it. Watch out now. Many folks have given up on folks. God don't want that's the lesson that as I was studying this thing, I said that's the lesson that God wants us to have. Yeah. Everything ain't what it looks like. That which may look like it's lost can be retrieved. Yeah. In other words, you can be raised up from whatever situation or state that you might be in. Why? Because with God, nothing is impossible. Yeah. Amen. But you have to understand that God supersedes the natural and goes into the supernatural and this is how we're going to see here what happened. It took the faith of the prophet. It took his faith to even go any further with it. Like I said, many people would have just threw up their hands and said, that's it. Give me another, give me another axe over here. Yes. But he said, no, I'm going to take advantage of this lesson that can be taught here. Yes. God is able to raise you up no matter how to the bottom and get into the feet to deliver many of us from the muck and the mire. And that's what the bottom of the Jordan River looked like. It was muddy. I don't know, you can go down to the Missouri River. And if you, if you don't want to try to swim in that, you can open your eyes all you want to. You ain't going to see nothing. Come on here. But now, uh-huh. So he's, and he's feeling bad. And, 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 and in this we see the prophet having compassion on the young man. He's worried because he borrowed the axe. And the man of God said, where fell it? In other words, where did it go in? He shooed or showed him the place. And he cut down on a stick. And I believe that as he was getting ready to do this thing, he'd already been talking to God about it. Amen. It was happening. Cut down a stick and cast it in thither. And the iron The iron did swim. Can you imagine a heavy piece of iron swimming? You know why most people can't swim? It's because they tense all up, and when they tense all up, they become heavy. Yeah, I learned a long time ago if you're going to swim, you got to let go and so you can float. You got to let go and let, come on now, the things of, of just letting yourself go and letting God have you. Get on somebody. And that's how the construction stuff, construction stuff. Now you think about it. You take a big cruise ship or uh, a big battleship, and have you ever, if you ever been to the ocean, the ocean is so deep, yeah. it's so fast, and everything, and you got these big oh, uh, ocean liners and big battleship and all that. Can you understand the, the weight of that ship? Yeah. But God uh, uh, gave it uh, knowledge to man to the point to so where you take all that weight and construct it in such a way and, that, and, and that there must be a hollow place within that ship with the, and they're all going to float. Yeah. Come on now, would you not understand the difference in the axe head and the ship? Oh, yeah. The axe head was a solid uh, material. There was no void in it. There was, come on now. And, and that's why a ship is able to float no matter how heavy it is. Far enough out into the ocean, which is so fast, it's able to float. But the access, so nobody don't get it all tricked up. Say, well, them big old ships float. But that's because they're made in such a way. But the axe head was supposed to sink all the way to the bottom, which it did. And a lot of times, you've got to understand that sin will sink you all the way to the bottom. It's not made, come on, not to float. I said, sin is not made to float. Sin is, is heavy and it will take you all the way down to the bottom. I can testify for myself. I said sin will take you all the way to the bottom. But how good you think you're doing right now? How you think you're on the mountain top? How people might be talking about you? And they ask you, brother, sister, how you doing? And you tell them I'm doing good. And they say, well, you know, I'm doing good. And they say, well, you know, I'm doing good. And they say, well, you know, I'm doing good. And they say, well, you know, I'm doing good. And they say, well, you know, I'm doing good. And they say, well, you know, I